Hello. You're looking pretty tonight. What is that, a top hat you're wearing? A boutonniere? Where does it come over you, I wonder? Regardless, this evening I'm talking with fans people. I issued the provocative question. Have you had a moment of realization? Has there been a moment in your life when you go like, oh, I've been thinking about this all wrong. Now I see food goes inside your body. No wonder I've been having problems. Pushing it against this part and that part. That's not going to get myself fed. It was like that one time when I had a hundred viewers in my live stream. I said to myself, wow, that's a lot. What a day that was. Oh, wait, that was earlier today. And they weren't real people. Perhaps, good, good evening, Salem Black. Perhaps your moment of realization dates back to childhood. That one season when you were on the really good soccer team. And you couldn't believe it because you sucked, but your team kept winning and winning. And you got the playoffs, you got the first round, second round of the playoffs, third round of the playoffs. And then there's that moment. You're about to get to the States. Take, take tournament. You're down 4-1. Second half, you already had your halftime oranges. And you realize, shit, we're totally going to lose this game. We're not going to go to this take to tournament. That's what that is. It's called a moment of realization. It's one of those moments where you just go, Fuck. Are you serious? Like that, you know. Mm -hmm. It usually involves an are you serious? You cannot be serious. Want to make me one of those? Or potentially a you got to be shitting me. Love amazing facts. How am I? Well, I'm infused with a slight citrus floral scent. I am burbling with gargles. That's how I am. Burbling with gargles. I wish I remember the name that I woke up from my nap saying. It's a strange name. Mm -hmm. I remember the last name was Figgins, but <laughs> uh, I don't remember what the first name was. Some sort of really strange mm -hmm. multi-syllable name. Uh, first game we kicked ass like 20 to nothing. We lost every game after that. Something with a Q, right? No, that was to Eric. Oh, to Eric, yes. We, we saw a uh, football game earlier where the first name of, of uh, I guess, the quarterback or one of the players on the teams was to Eric. D apostrophe E R I Q. Okay. <laughs> It's like, come on, Asian people. Stop being so stereotypical and naming yourselves. Like you, you rarely see a Chinese person that doesn't have a weird D-E apostrophe Ling Chang Tu with a Q at the end, you know? Anywho. Um, the Eric. <laughs> D apostrophe too. <laughs> D apostrophe Eric with a Q at the end. I mean, come on. Are you serious, Eric? Oh, yeah, I mean, the funny thing is, of course, you got all of these sports announcers who who have to say these names without the slightest bit of of indication that they're aware. That these names are absolutely ridiculous. 
Um, you're sick, Zaylin Black. I'm sorry to hear that. Would you like me to transubstantiate uh, some of this Marlboro Red to you? I hear that a lot of times people get sick because they are getting inadequate either tar or nicotine or both in their diets. I should call myself Larrick. Larrick. I should call myself Dela Dre Eric. Dela Eric Dre. That's what I should call myself. Dela Eric Dre. But it's spelled E R A K. So it's D apostrophe D E apostrophe E R A K apostrophe D R E. The thing is, if you really want to be fancy, you need a fair amount of apostrophes in your name. Can an INFP be a narcissist? Well, love amazing facts. Enjoy. Enjoy the delicious sounds. The wonderful, delightful sounds of uh, my beloved Rachel's lungs doing their job. Uh, can, can an INFP be a narcissist? Ah, wow, 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 wow. I don't really... Well, I know they... I know they can be abusive. I, I mean, they can be BPD. I, I, I know an INFP is BPD and was quite abusive with her wife once and same like Kimberly was abusive with me. Eventually still is. Uh, I would say that does not really qualify as being a narcissist, but if... If an INFP can behave that abusively because of BPD, then <coughs> it would make sense that they could behave that abusively for some other reason, such as narcissism as well. Is it possible to type someone accurately using only physicality? Sure. I mean, it's... Kitty love. It's possible to... Uh, to type uh, somebody accurately using just tarot cards. See, you're uh, ISTJ, Ethan, this is tarot card shit. Now, the question therefore is not really whether it's possible to type someone accurately <coughs> using a given thing. <coughs> I did predict that SC would win though, remember? I did pull a card for SC, USC. Oh. Did you? I don't yeah. remember. Actually, I don't remember, but that, that's fine. I take your word for it. Um, so the question isn't whether or not it's possible for um, somebody to type someone accurately using physicality. What's The real question is, is it possible to defend your typing if you type someone using physicality? Is it possible to be convincing it? Is it possible to win the argument about what type somebody is using those warrants? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, if someone talks with me in a little bit of a harsh tone, my ego gets hurt. That's why I feel like a narc sometimes. Michelle Way, that person copying is my girlfriend. Um, true that ESFJ women are most susceptible to being borderline Karen type? I don't think so. <laughs> I think it is the case that anybody can be borderline, equally likely to be borderline. It has everything to do with whether or not you have a secure attachment style or not. If, in fact, you have been abused as a child and have an insecure attachment style, then you will not treat your significant other well no matter what. You will be abusive. And it doesn't matter what type you are. I had an ESFJ ex-wife who was not remotely borderline. However, it doesn't mean she wasn't Karen-ish. I'm not exactly sure what qualifies as Karen-esque behavior, though. So, um, I, you know,
Sheila doesn't seem like an ice. <coughs> Sheila doesn't seem like an ISFP to you. She's not. She's an ISFJ. Oh, she's back. No, but <sighs> Ethan just said that. Um, Chase hates ENFJs. You mean CS Joseph? I mean, if CS Joseph hates a given type, that doesn't really mean anything because he has no idea. What type is what? He typed. I typed a woman the other day. Definitely SFP. I mean, no disputing it. She'd been typed before by somebody's ESFP. She was probably typed by me as ISFP. She mentioned that a couple people typed her before somebody ESFP, somebody uh, else typed it, her ISFP. I said, well, look, ESFP makes a little bit of sense. You know, it's it's not uncommon. I do it sometimes too that we mistake the introverted type for the extroverted type depending on the affects a lot, can sometimes impact us, whereas it shouldn't impact us that much. But whoever typed you as ISFJ knows absolutely nothing about cognitive functions. And she said, I remember his name, I think. Uh, C.S. Joseph. I said, okay, well, there you go. That that means it's essentially entirely meaningless, whatever came out of his mouth. Why well, I expect people to respect me, be soft with me by dating game ruins due to my taunting emotional reaction, even if a girl little judgment comment make me angry. Well, I mean, that's not unreasonable, love amazing facts. Um, you know, I'd like to think that I'm very careful at all times, or at almost all times, at speaking to Rachel. In other words, I'm not one who will excuse himself very easily if I have spoken harshly or judgmentally or at first certainly not taunting um oh i say you saying you do the taunting uh a girl makes a little bit of a judgmental comment i mean what do you comprise a what do you consider a a judgmental comment is it like I can't believe you're wearing that sweater. Does it have to be like that, or is it just, well, I'm not sure about what you're saying is correct, but I appreciate you sharing with me. Would that be considered judgmental or no? Or if a girl goes, what? You don't have a doctorate? That's judgmental. Mm -hmm. How about, I hate that movie too. Is that not judgmental because she's agreeing with you? Curious, curiouser and curiouser when we try to get to the bottom of, of, uh, example, I don't like your shirt. I don't like the design of shirt. Well, who would tell you that? Like anybody with any decent FE, if they don't like your shirt, they're not going to mention it. Yeah. Like, you know, if, um, I'll, I'll spare you guys with the uh, mute here. Look, C.S. Joseph is not being hatted on, okay? You understand? Nor is he being hated on. Okay. Um, yeah, the guy's name was. I'm sorry. This time.
Okay, so um, <coughs> okay. So, uh, I asked Rachel to um, go outside a little for a little while cause if she's going to be uh, coughing a whole bunch because it is very disruptive. And I understand. And I, I, uh, I get it. You know, it may, may cause a little conflict between me and Rachel, but I get it. It's annoying. Um, okay. So, as he's something really, really amazing for me to say, I like it. Then I compliment people. Otherwise, I can't take complimenting. I'm best at being genuine. Well, Michelle Way, I have typed a lot of people who have come out of typing from either C.S. Joseph or Dave Superpowers very dissatisfied. And then they come to me, and then they're generally quite satisfied after talking to me. Of course, when I type somebody, I spend an hour actually asking questions, maybe more than an hour, depending on the person. Um, but, you know, they're promised an hour for their money. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm serious about it. I have, like, C.S. Joseph is, would like there to be a quick and easy way for him to just say, yeah, you're a meow, yeah, you're a meow, yeah, you're a meow, and get money for it, and, um, not have, not have to worry about whether or not what he's saying is accurate or true or anything, if it were just you know, like astrology or something. But that's what you got to do. I mean, it's like, it's a challenge for anybody who's taking it seriously because um, it muddies the waters, you know? It makes it unclear whether or not this... Uh, makes it unclear whether or not the issue of typology is worth anybody any further attention. If you come to typology and the first thing you hit is C.S. Joseph and you're a TI one or two person, you're going to dismiss it. You're also probably because of the just inherent arrogance of, especially the intuitive halves of the TI one twos are going to assume you can intuit the rest. You know, at least I would. So I want to address this love of amazing facts thing. I don't give a damn about girl. If she doesn't think I'm her hero, why should I spend money on a date? Well, you can't expect to be her hero before you go on a date with her, right? I do think it's... I, I get what you're trying to get at, Love Amazing Facts. What I think he's trying to say is he wants to be with somebody who's smitten with him, not somebody who's withholding judgment. Um, unfortunately... If you want to accomplish that, then you're going to have to pull off something like I pulled off, which is just go for somebody who's already in your community and wants to date you. Then you know that they are going to... It's not fun. Look, Salem Black, what he's saying is not that she should fawn over him. No, that's not what he's saying at all, Zaylin Black. You are, wow, you are misreading that. No way in hell. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that, well, okay, look. I have this song that I, um, that I used to, well, that I still might sing sometimes. And the lyrics to it go, um, Hi, Darren C. Brits. Welcome. We appreciate your arrival and value your presence, Darren Seabritz. Or is it Cybritz? Anyway, what I'm trying to say is this. I used to have a song that goes like this. Um, you're mine if I want it. I'm yours if I want it too. But I want to be wanted. And I'm not sure it's something you can do. Right? Right? So uh, I'll repeat it just to clarify. It's, uh, you're mine if I want it. I'm yours if I want it too. 
but I want to be wanted, and I'm not sure that's something you can do. Because ultimately, my experience in the past was I started going out with somebody, and then they proceed to direct their attention towards what was wrong with Eric and what Eric needed to change and or how Eric had failed and or see Brits, huh? Well, Darren, see Brits, see this. If your name lacked the Brits and began with a D, it would spell die. My D-I is absolute shite. What is two plus two, you guys? I think the answer is two. I mean, I'm pretty sure whatever number is most common in a problem, that's the answer. In this case, it's two. No, I didn't misspeak. This was a phenomenon that I had experienced for the first time when my YouTube channel hit a certain a certain point. Okay, I had never experienced anything like it before in my life. <laughs> Completely unfamiliar with it. And I was very uncomfortable with it. And also having a hard time believing it. But nevertheless, it was the true truth. All of a sudden, it was like that. You're mine if I want it. And that means I guess I'm yours if I want it too. But I don't actually believe you want me. I mean, I know you want to have intercourse with me. But I don't think you really want me. You don't really want Eric, you know? Uh, not a, <laughs> look, I actually still had the tab open, um, when I came back from watching the USC football game. And, uh, so I looked at it and I didn't see any reply or anything. So, if I'm even a little bit critical about a girl on video calls, I will not go on a date, but I will never ever judge a girl on a date. I'm going to give and take love and offer interview. I mean, who am I, your supervisee, to be telling you relationship advice, love amazing facts, but I must say, uh, remember that in this relationship that I have now, where I truly believe that Rachel is quite enamored of me. Um, she was able to engage and you know begin the relationship from the proper. Uh, it was a message. It wasn't a comment. I sent him a message. Um, what am I saying? Oh, well, look, say you're an INFJ. Most of the time, you're going to end up starting to date somebody before you have a lot of time to gather a lot of information about them in terms of sort of data points for your NI to work with. So there's a there's an implicit challenge in that uh, for an INFJ or an ISFJ that they always feel like they are jumping off a cliff when they start getting into a relationship because they're fundamentally operating without adequate knowledge aforehand. And in contrast, Rachel had plenty of knowledge aforehand. And so did this other chick that I, I was write, wrote that song about, the one who wanted me to sleep with her but didn't really want Eric, you know? For my interpretation, anyway. That lady... Um, she uh, also had an opportunity she was an INFP and she had an opportunity to, to, to decide how she felt about me for a long time for a very long time um, on, on YouTube David Sanderson so she was very comfortable knowing what she wanted to do with me and meanwhile, I'm very comfortable not knowing it when I start something, whatever it is. I'm very comfortable with the um, uh, 
I recommend to reply to Xander Hall's tweets. He'll highly respond to you. Okay, well, why don't we do this? Why don't I open his live stream muted in another tab? Who did? All right, now you, everyone's confusing me now. So stop confusing me with your confusion. Yes, I did message who, that guy you're talking about. I know we've talked about this before. I know who you're talking about. What I was about to say was that I was going to open up his live stream in a, another tab, mute it, put it on captions, and comment on the captions. Um, while he's streaming, comment on what he's saying from the captions while he's streaming, and then put in the chat um, that I'm currently streaming about your stream right now, and I guess put a link to it, and uh, maybe I sent you a tweet and I want to debate you or something. Are there no captions in a live stream? Okay, well, there's no captions in a live stream. I can still do this. I just have to put on the headphones and change the audio. Why? Why? Um. Um. Well, there's this guy named uh, I forget his name already, but uh, he's live streaming currently, and this is a guy that Spirit Mayo wants me to debate. And so I said I would listen to his live stream, comment upon it, and so forth. Uh, Xander Hall. And uh, maybe that would get his attention. Thanks. Okay, so let me change the audio outs here. No, I'm not in OBS, um, which is fine because I don't. I don't want to be an OBS because I just this way I'll be able to listen to it. It won't you won't be able to hear it. I'll be able to comment on it, and I don't have to worry about any sort of copyrighty thing. Let me just wait for Rachel to finish getting. She's outside. And it's cold outside, so she's getting getting herself wrapped up here, bundled up. I guess I should say. Um, he ended and his stream. Chill. Never mind, he ended his stream. Lol. Oh well, fair enough. <sighs> I knew INFP are soft looking guys, but I have a rugged look and I have an aggressive emotional reaction. That's why I asked. And INFP, can an INFP a narc? I agree, I'm insecure and oh, a narcissist and arrogant too. I don't know if you are. I mean, I don't know. Being insecure and arrogant does not equal narcissism. RC says so, ENTPs are okay with not knowing what they're getting into. Yeah, by and large. Okay, I've already sent him a private message at Twitter. I I don't use Twitter, Spirit Man. Like I said, why don't you do that? Why don't you tweet him? You spent why don't you direct the energy you keep directing at me to do stuff and direct it to you doing it instead? You know what I'm saying? Sure love amazing facts. Hi, Lauren and Nicole. Hi, Lauren McGinley. Uh, let's anticipate. Hi, MC McVee? Maybe not. Um, because bad SE? That probably is the answer, Darren Siebert's. That probably is the answer that explains why Spirit Mayo doesn't uh, do that instead of telling me to do it. Um... The interesting thing is that I don't actually resent or dislike 
people trying to push me to do things inherently to the extent that it motivates me to do something as you did this morning, um, then great. But the thing is, I, I also don't trust your judgment. So, um, in other words, I wouldn't, I, I don't think I've given them enough time to potentially reply to it to even bother following up yet with anything else. If I were going to follow up with anything else, it would have to be the way I was just saying right there. And that opportunity is gone. So that's fine. Um, I don't use Twitter. In other words, I don't tweet at all. So I don't even, not quite sure how to tweet at him. I'm assuming you just put at his name or whatever. But if that were to be effective, why wouldn't just messaging him be effective? Michelle Way, you have made yourself super endeared to Grass Eater, apparently, by doing something. You whipped up a quick 15-minute live stream tutorial for, on settling for a city today, just FYI for later. Oh, well, that sounds cool. Thank you, Gen Xiel. Maybe I'll check it out. Biden? I mean, he's probably an ESFJ. Um, but... You know, now he's got, you know, medium stage dementia. So his personality is going to manifest a little differently. Oh, I understand, Spirit Man. You already did try. Well, thank you for trying. So the thing is, I think that probably the best way, if I were going to be effective in communicating like that with a bunch of, of debaters or whatever, then it would be a scattershot approach where I'd contact a bunch of them and uh, see who wants to, who see what I get a response from. Uh this person you're talking about, is she is she a big channel or what? If she's not a big channel and she's completely irrational, then I don't want to debate her. If she's a big channel and she's completely irrational, fine. But I don't like I don't wanna just waste my time getting mad about nothing for no good reason. When you gift someone, um, Michelle. People aren't gifts, okay? That's cool. That's good enough for me. Um, people aren't gifts. Your embrace of slavery needs to stop. Can somebody else join me here? Can I get a, a what what? And let's all tell Michelle Way that we don't approve of her slaver ways. You shouldn't enslave people, okay? You really shouldn't. Is Kamala? I don't know. I don't. I haven't talked, heard enough about her. I haven't heard her talk enough for me to me. I mean, look, if the person's got seven point three seven k subs, they're worth me debating. If it's a terrible debate and it's a waste of my time, intellectually, um, it's still a clash of of equals in terms of of channels. I mean. David Sanderson, what you're saying makes sense, okay? It makes perfect sense. But it, it's, what I'm doing here is exemplifying what RC confirmed earlier, which is, so, ENTPs are okay with not knowing what they're getting into? <laughs> I, I almost prefer it. I'm willing to do it? Yeah, sure. Totally. The other thing is, I'm also willing to be interviewed by anybody, interview anybody who wants to be interviewed. I want to do all kinds of shit. Thanks, love. Amazing facts. I actually agree with you, even though it's immodest to do so. I think that um, I've more or less got it right and that uh, 
the extent that people disagree with what I'm saying is because they don't have it as right as me in general with about typology, you know, but about, about a couple other things too. So, you know, I, I do have, unfortunately, an actual position that I sort of affirm, which is by and large, I'm about the things that I make statements about. I'm going to be more right than the vast majority of people, but that doesn't play well. You know, it's like, you're just arrogant. You just have to be right. You think you're so smart or shit like that. You know, it just makes me go. <sighs> I, but, uh, you know, it kind of, it makes me feel like, like you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. If, if I'm not, super knowledgeable, effective at answering, making all the arguments, et cetera, then I'm damned from those people who are, or sticklers for intellectual rigor. If I am, if I am upheld by those people, then I'm damned by those people who would insist upon, you know, nobody getting too big for their britches or something. Would it crush my ego to lose the debate with an ESFP? Uh, I mean, no. It's a, it's a weird question because it's certainly conceivable that I could have a debate with an ESFP and the ESFP be perceived to have won the debate. I mean, I've lost engagements, so to speak, with people before eh, on random occasions and it's never fun. I mean, the guy I lost this engagement of sorts with at 7-Eleven near the beginning of COVID was probably ISTJ, maybe ESTJ. And, but I was, I lost my cool. I mean, not, not that I, I did or said anything I regretted. I just, I was like insanely upset. And, uh, you know, it harmed my, my effectiveness in the debate, the street debate, so to speak. So, um, would it crush my ego to lose the debate with an ESFP? If I were to lose the debate with an ESFP, what that would mean is that um, I was perceived to have been pushed around the debate space by the other person. In other words, I'd start e explaining something. They'd say something that got me off track, and I'd get on the line. Da -da -da -da. Maybe I'd get angry, lose my cool, lose the perceptual battle. That's what it would mean for me to lose a debate against an ESFP. If you're saying, would it crush my ego to lose a, the substan the uh, actual debate on a substantive issue to an ESFP? Um, my answer to that is, you might as well ask me if it would crush my ego to wake up tomorrow morning as a six-year-old girl. It's a meaningless question. It's never, ever, 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 ever going to happen. So... I'm never going to be, in other words, I'm never going to lose an argument to an ESFP because it turns out I was wrong and they have the right argument. It's possible in theory, but um, it would have to be something where they had a freakishly, a, a freakish new argument that I'd never heard of before that actually resolved something significant or something like that, that uh, changed how I perceived a given very narrow uh, type of argument or something like that. That couldn't in theory happen. But so it's like, it's true that I wouldn't enjoy, I don't enjoy losing any kind of engagement with people. But I don't, um, I don't, 
I'm not too attached to it, frankly. I, I accept that you win some, you lose some. I've been a debate coach long enough. You know, you win some, you lose some. Sports have a wonderful way of making you learn how to lose graciously, especially sport like debate, where uh, you know you, you've got you're 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 the coach. You're not the the competitor, right? And the competitors are are kids, and you know you have tears, you've got joy. You've got the pure, the pure emotional engagement of these debaters who you have asked of them and they have given of you their heart and soul and prepping for this shit. Some of them, anyway. Those are the ones where, you know, you really feel it one way or the other. But you also learn to, um, Okay, ooh, 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 ooh. why don't you do it right now? It's almost six. Come on in. Come to the... Come to the... Autonomy room. I'll put the link. You can debate me right here. Ask me questions or tell me what you want to tell me or whatever. It's fine. I mean, one thing, though, we should probably start with is you said six and seven o'clock. It's Saturday. It's almost six o'clock. If you mean between six and seven o'clock in the morning, my time, there is very, very little chance that I'm going to be up at six or seven in the morning. Now, the thing is, if you say three in the morning my time, I might be up then. But I'm almost always sleeping uh, between around six and seven, usually. Not always, always. <coughs> Need more weed? <coughs> high will D and high vanity, you two make me think of chi. Maybe next day. About? Uh... Well, I was, at the moment, I was talking to O O O O about he wants to debate me about um, S E N E and stuff. But the thing is, before we even sit down to chat, O O O O, we should probably agree on on what happened the last time we talked about this. The last time we talked about this, um. You claimed to have made a distinction between any and SE. Now, you may really have a real distinction that you are ready to elucidate, as you say, or articulate once we talk. That may be the case. But we should both agree, in no uncertain terms, that heretofore you have not established a meaningful distinction. So, you know, as of yesterday, you were you were still trying to say you're going to agree to disagree, um, but in fact, as I point out, in no uncertain terms, and it's pretty indisputable that heretofore, before we talked, you have not actually established any meaningful distinction. And the distinction that you did establish, namely that it's you is required to do it, does not work. Okay, so that's the case. That is true. So far, I've, been, I've had a difficult time getting you to acknowledge that. It, it shouldn't be difficult to get you to acknowledge that because it's very obvious, straightforward, not a point that should be in any dispute. So if you have trouble acknowledging that, then we're probably not going to get anywhere when we talk because it means you're not really working to make progress. Working to make progress means acknowledging when we nix something because it doesn't work. How does dominant TI differ from tool TI? What are the differences in focus mode thought manifest? Tool TI is not an absolute value. That's the most important thing to note. It's an instrumental value, whereas dominant TI is an absolute value. TI is an instrumental value means that if there are things in my relationship, for example, things that 
let's say uh, things that let's say Rachel says that are logically inconsistent, or my dad says that are logically inconsistent, or who somebody in my family or whatever. I don't really care. I'm not going to feel a need to correct them. Let's say there's something that's unfair that's going on. Like, well, it's not fair that meow gets meow, but I don't get meow. I don't really care. As long as um, my FI is met. So basically, when it comes to judging for myself, I use FI, not TI, which is why I'm so random and impulsive in part. My FI is like a toddler. But as long as, but it's, it's a easy, it's a, it is not a fussy baby in the sense that um, as long as you're not a terrible parent to my FI, my FI will be perfectly fine. Uh, if, if I'm a terrible parent to my FI, like I was in my last relationship where I let somebody um, emotionally abuse me, then my FI will start to act up. But by and large, it's easy enough to make me happy. Uh, I just need to get what I want some of the time when I, it's important to me. And the rest of the time, I don't really know what I want. So, um, all right, cool. So then we can possibly work together because we're not, you're not just being irrationally oppositional. And then that's fine. Great. Um, so, yeah. The other thing is in the tool function, it's very easy for me to TI stuff that's at this level or whatever. But once we get to like a node, for example, I was trying to think a little bit the other day about, um, about defining the mechanics a little more carefully. For example, I can put information on the metaphysical external metaphysical field while concurrently getting information from a book as long as it's the same information, right? So I can read something to myself or I can read it out loud, in other words. Um, but I cannot get information from one source on the external metaphysical field, like from a book, while concurrently putting not the same information on the external metaphysical field, which is to say, I can't... <coughs> I can't read a book and understand it in my head while concurrently saying something else out loud. So basically, if we're looking at it in terms of put and get, there seems to be a lot of sort of blanks to be filled in in terms of those kind of mechanical statements. We can really begin to narrow down um, how a given function uh links to another function in terms of exclusivity or proportionality or inverse proportionality or something like that. Um, if we can, if we can establish some of those kind of statements as observationally uh, true and thus, thus far, not, not, not heretofore subject to falsification counter examples, then uh, we can really start to TI out, the actual mechanics of the whole thing in a way that's simulatable. I mean, I don't have a schedule like that. Ooh, I, I'm just telling you that by and large, I, uh, I'm not awake that you picked like the one time when I'm not awake, when I'm least likely to be awake. Okay, I'd be happy to debate. Sure, that's fine. Um, you know, the thing is, my main goal from this point forward is to not allow any of my debates, quote unquote, to upset me, to get me emotional to the point where I'm off my game. Not that I'd be off my game in terms of what I'm saying or the argumentation that the actual argument's being made, but I'd be off my game in terms of not as effectively conveying those, not conveying them 
I can make as many as I reasonably can in a given period of time, not highlighting the right ones and or it's generally not winning the perceptual battle. So it's very important for me to stay calm and to remember that. And yeah, I tell you, I tell you where the calm comes from too, which is interesting as I, as I realized it, the calm comes when I'm not afraid at all. And when I get upset in some sense, it stems from fear. And I realize this fear is totally irrational. It's like, um, I hear somebody like that Mac guy and he's spewing fancy sounding bullshit and making it such that it is a kind of attack that renders language itself less useful and is likely to drag me down into this weird muddy pit of trying to explain why nothing he's saying is meaningful while he meanwhile is trying to win the debate just on uh, tone of voice, basically. So, um, the thing is, I don't need to be scared of that. There's no reason for that. It's irrational on my part. I, I know already, and I, I believe in full that I have all the arguments I need to have. I, I know all the arguments people are going to make. I almost never get surprised by one. But if, if one does surprise me, great. No big deal. It's just going to fit into some sort of category of argument that I already understand. It's going to impact the given topic in ways that I can, I can work with. You know, absolute worst case scenario is I'm actually wrong about something substantive. And somebody has an argument I've not heard before that corrects me about um, let that matter, in which case I'll concede the debate and change my position. So there's no reason for me to fear anything. And the funny thing is, what do I, what do I fear? Like, you know, if it is in fact the case that when I get upset, it's because I, it's, it emerges from fear in some sense. If that is in fact the case, I don't fear good thinkers. I don't fear good debaters. I fear dissembling. I fear muddlers, people who who won't meaningfully talk about anything, who shift ground, who who use SE approaches to discourse such that my NETI approach on the external metaphysical field becomes less effective at communicating information. Well, extroverted intuition can put information on either the internal or the external metaphysical field. So when I'm extrovertedly intuiting, um, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm putting it on the external metaphysical field. In order to do that, I have to vocalize it out loud or write it in a book, for example, or make a movie or any other kind of time object that is communicative. But... Uh, you know, it can be extroverted intuition that you have inside your own head, too. It's still, the reason, I mean, extroverted intuition is a bad name for it, but the reason it's extroverted intuition is because it is, it's an act, I mean, I don't know why they call it that. It shouldn't be called that. It should be called ideation. You know, that's that's the best name for it. The two intuitions should be called ideation, that's N-E, and intuition, that's N-I. The uh, the two knowledge functions should be called, I guess, perspective, SI, truth, that's NI. The two judging functions should be called um, disinterest and interest, TI, FI. And the two interface functions should be called people or protocols, you know, something like that. It, they're the calling extroverted intuition is the worst of all the names though extroverted intuition is the worst of all the names because extroverted intuition is not exactly really intuition 
it is reliant upon introverted intuition to build off of. But so, oh, 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 I do not have a usual whatever that you're saying. I sleep random times. Um, sometimes I will, my sleep patterns will change based on what my schedule is. But um, no, I, I, if I said NI ideation, I misspoke. What I'm saying is, or pro possibly what I meant was like, okay, if um, some ideation resonates with NI more than other ideation, but I, I don't know. It, I don't think there is such a thing as NI ideation. I think NI is a receive function that's most comfortable receiving information and knowing what it means. Whereas any is a information putting function, either internal or external metaphysical field. All right. So here's the thing. Oh, oh, oh. oh. If you are, want to talk to me about it because you want to like ask me questions to figure out what my position is, fantastic. If you want to talk to me about it because you want to uh, you want to debate me about it or something, then I'd highly recommend you watch some some more stuff or read some more stuff before you come and try to argue with me because I'm, I'm inherently more prepared for you than you are for me. And I don't mean to say that as like a, a, a braggy thing or a challenge thing. I'm just saying I've people come in here all the time to try to knock down what I'm saying, but the vast majority of them don't actually know what I'm saying or haven't looked into it at all. So I'm just saying, if you want to, uh, if you want to, if you're coming in specifically to to knock down what I'm saying, you'll be well served to spend some time looking at it. If you're not coming in specifically for that purpose, you just want to sort of discuss and figure out where we agree or disagree. So that's totally fine. I get that too, or something. I don't know. But um, it's like there's a lot of, I guess you would say, beginning level stuff where you might initially want to disagree with me, but then. Um, if you, if you did a little bit of work, you realize, okay, I don't want to disagree there. I want to disagree at this more difficult spot for him to defend. Cause there's a lot of stuff. You might try to argue this, that's, there's dead ends that you could possibly exercise before you get there. Just a thought. Who, who's in this room anyway? I forgot about you guys until I heard the faint sound. It was just David Sanderson of, of tapping and tipping and voices or something through the headphones that were hanging near me. How's it going, David Sanderson? On a scale of one to 10, how good is it going? Okay. One being the Holocaust, ten being the rapture. Hi, darling. Are you doing a typing? No, I uh, I actually am going to take these headphones off right now and put it back on speaker. I had, was going to do something that was going to require me to have headphones on, but then I that thing that I was going to do that to ended, and so uh, I I just I didn't. It's not worth explaining. <laughs> Hi, everyone. What's up, YouTube? Oh, no, I don't worry about that. Oh, 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 I am not. I have never. I will never conflate my ideas with myself. If you successfully knock down my ideas, I'll say thank you. Now I will use the better idea. Okay. But what I'm saying is. Don't waste your time trying to knock down um, heavily reinforced, well-planned, well-executed structures. Try to find a weak spot first. Try to understand what you're attacking before you launch an attack. 
you'll be a lot more likely to be successful because a lot of people have run up against these cliffs before, bashed themselves against them to no avail. So I'm just, I'm just trying to sort of, uh, Make thing, make help make the conversation as productive as possible. <clears throat> so okay, right. What Sky Gear says: find a cave underneath there where there's full full TNT barrels. If you if you're gonna just think you're gonna knock down the castle by running into the front door over and over again, it, you're just running into a, a big wall of stone, and you and your horses will all have bruised faces to no avail for anybody. So you have to you have to work a little ahead of time to find something to attack. It's pretty cleanly made, you know. The whole idea is pretty clean. It it's narrow in the scope of its claims intentionally. It's operational in its definitions. It can be represented in a number of different uh ways that can sort of transliterate between each other. Uh it can break down to a simulation. It's got a, it, it's, it, it does everything you want it to do basically. So if you're serious about about wanting to come in and entangle with it, um, you know, bring go in there first with a very careful prospector's eye. What can I find here that I can actually meaningfully engage, rather than just I I trust my my random untested instincts. I'm sure I'm gonna kick his ass, which is what I think a lot of people do. What's up, Don? Because hi, Dankus. <laughs> are you the dankest are you the dankest What's, meme of all what is the story of Tristan and Isol 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 my ESFP roommate V used to uh, be in love with that story is it Shakespeare Tristan and Isa Isol. something Tristan and This. this is how I know it. Tristan and I is old. Yeah. Um, who is it written by? Let's see. I guess it's the origins suggest maybe I, I don't know. It doesn't say who wrote it. Possible Irish antecedents. Uh, I'll be back. Okay. <sighs> well, I'm saying. Okay, so look. If this is not just oh 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 oh, but anybody at all who wants to come in here and so sort of, you know attack, which is totally okay. Okay, you come in here and negate all you want, but first you deal with the framing. So go all right. What is Eric attempting to do, and how does one validate that kind of thing? What are the different ways in which we can validate it, and which strategy of validation puts me in best position to attack? So think about that first, because when you come in and start directing questions that don't have any framework, I can always just point out, well, that's, I'm not making the claim to do that thing, right? So because I'm the one affirming, I get to conscribe the scope of the thing I'm affirming. So being aware of how you're going to frame your critique, whether it's a I'm, I made a hammer to try to screw in a screwdriver. That's a kind of a framework argument that this thing that you're talking about here, this thing that you're doing is not appropriate to the kind of thing you're attempting to understand or explain. That would be one kind of critique you could make. Or you could critique, it is appropriate to the kind of thing you're trying to explain. You're just doing it wrong. Now, note, you can't make both those arguments concurrently because they cancel each other out. So. Those are the sort of things I'm saying you need to think about before you you come in to debate me. Understand what it is you think I'm trying to do, how that thing would be done properly, 
where I vary from that proper way of doing it before you actually worry about the specific things that I'm saying. Understand that um, you know, like for example, if I write a math problem, four plus four equals eight, and you complain, this guy's not saying anything. Those aren't words. Those, those aren't words, those little little scratches there. It looks like a little chair with a little line through it and that little snowman looking thing. Those aren't words. This guy's crazy. Hey, buddy, you're wrong. These aren't words. Well, of course, in that case, what's the problem? Is the problem that the guy's wrong about his his math, that four plus four doesn't equal eight? No, that, that's not wrong. What's wrong is that the person who's attacking doesn't understand that within the framework of the thing that the person is doing, you don't use words, you use numbers. So in other words, they think every communication method or every symbology method is necessarily language, spoken language with words. All right, so if, you get, if you're confused when, when I communicate like this, this is what I'm saying. <sighs> to make this a productive conversation, this is the kind of stuff that you really need to understand first. So if you're disagreeing with something I say, remember, you're disagreeing that something I say supports or upholds or is consistent with the whole point that I'm making, okay? If you try to take something out of, like you say, well, it's not, but it's just not true that the, um, that the, it's just not true that, that cars have um, a, a wobbly beanie hat on top of them. Well, mine does because I put it there. So you see, you need to, I don't even know how to explain what I'm explaining anymore. I've lost my train of thought. But the point is, if I'm if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing wrong, then you need to know what I'm supposed to be doing first. You think the weakest part of our system is how absolute the polar actually is? You mean you think that people can quote unquote improve in their polar or uh, or attend to it in a more conscious or meaningful way? Is that what you're saying? Because if if you're saying that, then I disagree with you. If you're saying you are you using the polar test as like a final judgment or something? If you're, you're saying that, interpretation. If, if that's what you're saying, that the weakest part of my system is that I rely too much on the polar tests. Um I mean, then what you're saying is this. Uh I I put too much emphasis on preferring to have a clear and binary determinant over uh, having less uncertainty, but less risk of being wrong or something. The thing is, as we move it from something that's purely relatively absolute, that is to say definitionally so, and something that actually links to concrete observations, it's going to get increasingly so that um, a person's type becomes determinate. It it may be the case that I'm I'm. But the thing is, it would be a fair critique if you think it makes me wrong. I don't think it does. Uh, let's see here. No, I think Go Sierra says no. Go ahead. I'm sorry, David. Go ahead. I know, and I said go ahead. Okay. No, I think that all you can do with your polar is improve your third one. For example, work on my FE because my F I polar. Yeah, uh, I I agree with Ghost. I think that polar is something that you experience in real time and you kind of got a toddler's relationship to it and <laughs> you have difficulty understanding it 
or improving it or anything like that. But it does, to the extent that you want to improve at it, I agree, you tend to improve your third slot instead. Hmm. Uh, Google moderator team, Grass Eater. What did it say? <sighs> I was supposed to work this evening uh, with Jeffrey on debate stuff. So it feels so much later. I know it's <sighs> not even six o'clock. Yeah. Let's see what's going on on the phone. Jeff's mom. Seven. Yeah, I can start at seven. Confirmed. <clears throat> you can see a lot of stars tonight. I, uh, I didn't look at the sky purposely, and my mind went to automatically, like, I couldn't. But I couldn't remember why. Now I remember why. Because my phone is broken. Uh, right. It's not broken. I think if I get another a new charger, it may work. Um, there's a chance. Um, we're gonna get you a new phone shortly and soon. Okay. <clears throat> sure. I'm not. I'm just piling up some money for it because phones are expensive. But I I, oh, I know. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I just ahead. wanted to say it's a beautiful night out. It's like a you can see a bunch of like stars. It's really nice. Cool. Well, maybe uh, after we, we'll stop this, maybe 6.30, go for a walk or something. Maybe. Sure. Um, Michelle Way, I'm curious. You say this live stream is really good for your buildup. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Are okay. you are you, <laughs> are you working out? Are you constructing an office building of some sort? Are you uh, are you working yourself up emotionally to start yeah. your, to do, begin your own live stream? Yeah. What do you mean by that? That's I think if you surround yourself with people who can effectively use your polar, then I can learn a lot from them. I'm dating an INFJ and I literally love the TI. So are you a, uh, are you TI polar? Um, the thing is, INFJ TI is easy for a TI polar person to love because it's selfish and it only, Sorry. it comes into play when they want it to. Um, which is not necessarily usually often, right? So if if they feel like you're being unfair, then they'll call you on that. If they feel like you're being inconsistent in a way they don't like, they'll call you on that. But they, uh, by and large, if they if it's not causing them a problem, it won't it won't impose itself on you. Um, it seems impossible to really convince an ESFP. Uh, that they're wrong about something. Yeah, well, because they always default to, you're just doing that black and white thinking thing again. You know, words don't mean anything. I haven't seen my brother say that yet, but he's uh, eight. Huh. My second youngest brother. Hambone recommends Cowboy Bebop. I have looked to try to watch Cowboy Bebop before. It's the one anime series I can't seem to find without paying for it separately. It's not really part of any yeah. streaming service or anything like that. I will at some point get it, but uh, I haven't yet. Um, right now, we're taking a bit of an anime break. Uh, we were on anime binge for a while. Um, you don't go to the gym because they require you to wear a mask. That's counterproductive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, it's silly. It's it's participating in a big pile of nonsense for no good reason, but except that we have to basically. You know, it's it's. I wish I could think of a great analogy, but I can't. Oh, well, okay. Here's an analogy. If if masks were important, what like. A like compression in an airplane mm. is important. Mm -hmm. Then what we have currently is 
people always walking by the emergency exit of the airplane door while it's at 30,000 feet and just, you know, opening it in a crack and then, you know, closing it back up again. Okay. So if masks were important, like compression is important, then the masks are failing to do the job they're supposed to be doing because nobody actually uses them like that. When are you least likely to have your mask on when you're in a store? Whenever you're speaking to somebody because they can't understand you. Yeah. So you pull down your mask. I said, blah, 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 blah. Watch football on TV as I've been watching and you will see this happen every fucking time. The coach has got their mask on, mm -hmm. walking them down the sideline. Every time he talks to anybody, be it player, referee, assistant coach, anybody, he pulls his mask down, gets in their face and says, blah, 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 and then puts his mask back on, okay? This kind of sense, this kind of shit deeply offends, deeply, deeply offends my sense of rationality. Like, why are we still pretending I feel the same way. This is what I want. I want a shirt that says, or a mask that says, or both that says, you know, ideally a, a shirt because it could say it more big while wearing a mask. You say, these masks demean us all. You know? Yeah. I don't like them either. And I've been getting used to the idea of not wearing them because I'm like over it. Yeah. So I have to keep on remembering that it's still going on to keep on wearing a mask. Remember, Michelle, we, way, however you say it, don't blame the low talkers. Blame the, the COVID alarmists. Yeah. They're the ones to blame. Low talkers were doing just fine before the COVID alarmists forced them to cover their mouths. I mean, who is, who is this bullshit supposed to help? It's supposed to help people like my dad. My dad cannot operate in the world with masks because he relies on reading lips because he's almost totally deaf. So, thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys, for helping the elderly. <laughs> oh, God. Let's help the elderly. Now, old lady who's in the nursing home, you are no longer allowed to see your family for six months. <laughs> Thanks. You're helping the elderly. Mm -hmm. Caitlin Benet has a great mask worn by force, not by fear. Um, the thing is, I like these masks demean us all best. Okay. The thing is, a, a, a little phrase like that can be massively important. Like take Black Lives Matter as a phrase. Here's what makes it a powerful phrase. Something that makes me mad about it, but is that it actually is powerful, is that it's difficult to respond to. You can't say, no, they don't. You can't say, um, bah, Black Lives Matter. You know, it's like, I'm sick of that kind of talk. No. What, what are you saying then? You think they don't matter? You know, mm -hmm. it's it seizes a lot of ground. So the best thing that people came up with in response to it is, all lives matter. Um. <laughs> My response to it is police corruption is important and you're imposing your stupid race frame on it is undermining any meaningful attempt to affect policy change. So stop being so racist, you stupid racist. That's my approach to, to Black Lives Matter. When people say Black Lives Matter, I say, as an African-American, I am offended by your racism, sir. Do not find me by my race. Do not put this arbitrary distinction of race that you have in your head about me onto me in front of my personhood. It's true. I mean, can you imagine if it were an organization that were for the mentally disabled and it were called Retarded Lives Matter? I mean, the people whose lives you were talking about, they'd say, hey, I prefer not to be reduced to a retarded life. You know, could you just maybe... Could I just not be reduced in that fashion? Can I just be a person, maybe? How about that? It's like if if I if I self-identified as one race and that one race happened to be African American, I would be really 
really bothered because God, other people get to be people first, but we have to be black first. You know, that's that's a good, much better way to attack um, Black Lives Matter. Is that where you got it? Do you have to watch commercials though? Probably. I don't like to watch commercials. And also, Adult Swim's going to have it in subtitle and uh, dubs. I mean, I only want to watch it in subs. They do set up the Special Olympics. That's true. My hatred of FI is showing. I don't think that's hatred of FI. That's a love of reason and a love of non-divisiveness. So, you know, if because I am fluidly transracial, I understand how difficult it can be when I'm Guatemalan and the neighboring um, Ugandans, I mean, uh, Uruguayans hate me because just because I'm Guatemalan. I've been there. I've been that Guatemalan woman. I've been hated by the Uruguayans. I know what it's like. But then the next day, I was Uruguayan. And I said, hey, I'm putting a stop to this. I'm not Uruguayan. I'm not Guatemalan. I'm not Argentinian. I'm Eric. And if you hated me yesterday, you should still hate me today, even though I'm a different race. Okay? Because I'm a pretty hateable guy. And if you don't hate me consistently from day to day, you're not working hard enough. Oh, Cowboy Bebop is good dubbed. It can't be as good as... I'm not multiracial. Do not call me multiracial, please. That's very racist of you. I'm fluidly transracial. I'm multiracial. Rachel is multiracial. She's also multiracial. Mm -hmm, I'm both. She's multiracial, Rachel. <laughs> but I'm trans... Racial and I'm fluidly transracial. So it's a big difference. My last name doesn't change with my race, Darren Siebritz, obviously. I'm a lot of different things, Michelle Way. Um, you know, it depends on the morning, depends on the day. Basically, when I change races, I can't really tell any big difference, except the, the one thing that stands out is when I become Chinese, I get karate with it. So I'll tend to find myself periodically, yeah. But um, other than that, all the other races, I mean, obviously when I'm Mexican, I I have a burrow that I lead around, uh, you know, because in case I have to, to pack something, you know, put some packs on top of it and carry it from, from one Pueblo to another. But uh, beyond that, I feel like exactly the same guy, you know. I love I love fried chicken when I'm Latina. I love fried chicken when I'm, French Canadian. I love it when I'm Chinese as well. It's not just the Latvians who are super into fried chicken, okay? I was joking, but I see your point. In my master's program, I said a similar thing. People said you were erasing their trauma and obstacles they must face on a daily basis. You weren't privileged. I said, not only that, I'm incredibly powerful. After all, I'm able to erase other people's trauma. High five. Thereby ending the divisive bullshit that's spewing from your stupid F.I. mouth. <laughs> it's a good response to the professor. They love it when you talk to them like that. They love it. I mean, the point is... My real point is... How dare you impose a racial identity on me? I've told you I'm fluidly transracial. You just told me I'm white and privileged. I mean, how about I tell you that you're a straight white male? What do you think about that? Delandre, um, Laquisha Jackson. Why don't I say you're a straight white male? You like it? How do you like it when I confer identities on you? When I confer arbitrary labels on you? That's what I would do, you know. I think, of course, you did, Tristan. I did too when I was in college. I was too young. People, they, they don't let smart old people go into college because we destroy the place. <laughs> you know, it's like you've learned your lesson by the time you're 50 years old. I would never do college like I did it the first time again. I would, I would go in there uh, on the war path and I'd leave professors weeping in my wake. But as you know, with the time, you go along to get along. Oh. Do 
You're white and unprivileged? I mean, look, we are all privileged in different ways. For example, the urban male African-American youth is privileged in that if he grows up to try to be a rapper, he'll be afforded more credibility right out the gate than someone who doesn't so self-identify. Should I complain about that privilege? I don't know. Um, but what I want to ask is, is the plumber coming over tomorrow? Monday. Okay, cool. That's good. Yeah. I got to take out some more tiles from the uh, from the old bathtub there. Got to bust out the old circular saw. Saw through an inch of concrete. Pull off those tiles. Make it easier for the plumbers to get up into there with their fingers. Then after the plumbers fix it and leave, I'm going to put in, that's right, a little door. <laughs> a cute, adorable little door. I thought that PV might have fallen into the hole. I was so worried about that. <laughs> I was like, PV. <laughs> She'd be able to get out of there. Out of the, okay, that's good to know. Out from underneath okay, the house, cool. Cool. She might have been. She might have been under there. I wouldn't be surprised. She was gone for the whole day, which is really good. She's like back to her old self, really. Well, I've got the most points of all of them, Tristan Ortiz, because I am fluidly transgender. Yeah. I go from slightly womanly to extremely manly and back again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm fluidly transagile. I go from about age 14 to about age 54. So usually I rarely get under 14, except when I'm uh, when I'm feeling FI, in which case I'm like three. And uh, anyway, and I'm also, of course, fluidly transracial. And um, I am heterosexual, but uh, it's equally likely that I'm a lesbian since I'm transgender. You know, it's like when I'm manly, obviously I'm heterosexual. When I'm a woman, I'm then lesbian because I'm still attracted to and having sexual intercourse with Rachel. So when I transgender to full blast woman, one of the things that's weird about me is I still re retain a, a, a male set of genitals and uh, a strong desire to les out, as you might say, with Rachel here, except it, the odd thing is the lesing out is indistinguishable from heterosexual intercourse. Yeah. So we, I'm not really sure what's going on there. We did scissor. We have scissored before. Yeah. Yeah. We found out it wasn't for us. It was a little bit too, what, technical? Well, I mean, I think the point is, Rachel, we've discovered that we can press our genitals together mm -hmm. like this more effectively <laughs> when we're not moving our legs like scissors. Yeah. But actually, the scissoring part makes it difficult to keep your it's, genitals it's, pressed it, up against each other. It was difficult. It really was. Um, Winston's mom, uh, thank you for uh, asking. I haven't checked the planets today because my phone is out of commission. Who out on commission. Who cares if Obama's a bisexual? I don't think he is, but who cares? <laughs> What that Honestly, mean? that is a who care. Who cares? <laughs> you know, I I've never heard that before. <laughs> I've never heard that before oh, either. <laughs> so fucking funny. I have. I mean, if he is good for him, you know. <laughs> to each their own. We will not confuse you with a Korean golfer, Michelle. We. Nor oh. will we confuse you with the French word for yes, we. Nor will we confuse you for the collective first person, we. You are instead Michelle Way. No, we will also not confuse you for the thing that accompanies Kurds. Nor will we confuse you for the action one takes when using a scale. Everybody got that? Everybody clear on that? Who Michelle Way is? She's not a Korean golfer. Yes, way, Darren Seabrits. If you thought she were the Korean golfer, why didn't you tell me? I'm a huge. What's your name? Michelle Wee fan. <laughs> I'm not really a huge Michelle Wee fan. I, <laughs> I'm not a fan of any women golfers, particularly 
I wouldn't call myself an LPGA fanatic. I mean, sure, I, I watch most of the major LPGA tournaments, but I'm sure I've got a top 10 female golfers list in my head at all time, but I wouldn't call myself a real fanatic. <laughs> That's why in high school, Michelle's middle name was Kurdzand. So your husband's Chinese. Does that mean you're not Chinese, Michelle? Are you a non-Chinese who married a Chinese? Or is that just today? Are you fluidly transracial like me? I could go for <clears> some <throat> something chocolate. You want to go get some ice cream or something? <gasps> yeah. Hey, we'll go in just a little bit. That sounds great. I just want to point out one of my personal cocktail party stories, facts, yes, little anecdotes about me that is truly deeply fascinating. Cool. So um, one time I dated a woman named Kim Moon Lee. And she was a white woman. But uh nope, not Korean. Yes, she was the ex-wife of a husband whose name had been Lee, but he too, not Korean or Chinese, white guy, like a Robert E. Lee kind of Lee, right? So I'm pretty convinced that uh, I'm the only person who's ever dated somebody named, well, I'm not the only person. I'm the only one besides all those many, many, many other people who've dated Kimberly to date someone named Kim Moon Lee <laughs> that's not Korean. Oh my God, that was her name? Kim Moon Lee, wow. yeah. She could be next in line for the North Korean uh, Supreme Leader position as far as her name sounds, right? Yeah. Instead, no, white woman. White Sorry. as the freshly blown snow, as they say. Uh, Rachel, my darling. Yes, my come love. to me for a second. I love you so much. As you can see, Rachel and I have very similar skin tones. Yeah, we do. And yet, I'm African, and she's a mix of different things. I'm North African. They found genes in North Africa. Yeah, I took the twenty-three in me. Whoops! I just changed. I'm Japanese now. <gasps> my race just changed. Right, as we were talking about. It's funny how that happens. Sometimes I think it's like it's almost responding to what I want or something, but I know it just happens randomly. I'm so it's coincidence. I'm surprised your hand hasn't come to my boot because of that. Mm, well, I'm, I'm a Japanese male still. Oh. Uh, you know, occasionally I will also, the transgender thing will happen. And if, I, if it happens, it coordinates with Japanese. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh shit, I got Japanese woman see, disorder. See? It happens. This is what I have to live with. That's Japanese woman disorder, yeah. <laughs> How much do I charge for a typing session? A hundred dollars for a one hour face to face talk uh in one of my um in one of my whereby rooms. And you can publish if you want. You can record and not publish and then share it with you via Google Drive if you want, or you did not record it all. It's entirely up to you. It really is. He gives the power to the people. I got the power. Okay, so your maiden name is Smith. You know, for supposedly common last name, you never hear anybody named Smith anymore. Michelle Smith. Very, very... Um, <laughs> An uncommon name, really. Yeah, it is. I think pretty soon Smith is going to become more common as a first name than a last name. Dude, one guy named What's that? A very common name. I couldn't understand you. Oh. Uh, what did you say? Fame Smith. Fame Smith? Huh? I think I'm going to get a new phone running Fox, actually, invest. I, I'm even willing to take out money from my uh, CD. Uh, we'll get it. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, maybe. But we'll, we'll get um, a new phone. We need to go to the phone store. 
I guess maybe we could do it tomorrow. Maybe we could do it. I'm not in a rush. I mean, I I am in a rush because I know that you are in a state of <sighs> waiting for your phone to be operational again. And I don't want to just get it fixed because it's time for you to get a new phone anyway. <laughs> Michelle Way says, see, it's just objective as typing session. It might be $1,000 now. Stop. I mean, I get the thing about having it at $1,000. Let's say he only gets one-tenth of the typing sessions that I get. He still makes the same amount of money. So there's that. Not an incredibly dumb thing to do, that's, I guess. I hope that's not tr true. But I hope nobody pays it. That's what I hope. <sighs> like, yeah. Like how how dumb would you feel after you paid him a thousand dollars? Pretty dumb. It really makes me feel like he's uh, genuinely being kind of exploitative. Yeah, the snake oil. It was that was perfect way. I mean, the thing is, if he's just like genuinely yeah, dumb and getting it wrong all the time, and believes in himself. And is charging a reasonable amount. Like, you know, for example, Marty. That ESFP we typed. He's not... He's just as wrong, if not more, than CS... I mean, you can't be more wrong as CS... He's just as wrong as CS Joseph. But I don't get the sense that he... Uh, he's being... What's the word? Like Machiavellian. Mm. But I get this I get the feeling anyway that CSJ is being kind of Machiavellian. Is, yeah. About the whole thing. Whereas Marty, who might be just as wrong and just as earnest in saying bad bad and wrong things about about typology, is vastly less guilty of of sort of ethical problems is um what do you think would happen if you actually did see us joseph what do you think his approach would be <sighs> i mean it's it's there's one reason why i don't want to i don't necessarily think it'd be like to debate cognitive functions is people are most people haven't come at the question from the beginning. You know, they didn't start at the the proper spot or think that uh, oh, it's distracting me. We gotta go get ice cream here. Yeah, Listen, can we? Oh, you're not you have you're long, not understanding things. You have properly. work at seven, don't you? Yes, I work at seven. Thanks for not forgetting. No problem. Listen, you don't write a word as a result of NE, okay? A cognitive function is a, a way of how you be. Okay? It's a way of how you be. Yeah. It is not, in that regard, um, the same thing as a function in math. So it shares a lot of qualities with a function in math, but it's not identical to one. Late, guys. I gotta get a jacket, Rachel. I'm looking for one. Time. Okay, yeah, I'll be right there. Okay. Um, intuition, what I really mean is that right now, my being manifests via ideation. Now, ideation is not simply producing a word, for example, like you said. Um, if, if I were to, if you were to show me a picture of a dog and I were to say dog, that would not be extroverted intuition. That would be introverted intuition, naming the identity of something. But the word would still come out of my mouth. So therefore, is extrovert intuition talking? No, that's incorrect. It correlates strongly with it, 
but it's ideation. And regardless, it's not a thing. You are being via this channel of attention. Now, it is necessarily the case that not all attention requires cognition of the sort that we normally think of as cognition. In other words, punching someone in the face is still paying attention to them, even though it doesn't have any thinking involved in it necessarily. All right. Okay, I got to go. All right. I'll see you guys later. I got to work. Later. Yeah, I got to work. I, I got to work with my debate student from 7. Yeah. Yeah, from 7 to 9. So I'll be occupied this evening. But and I'll probably go to bed. I'm kind of tired. But uh, I will, uh, you know, I'll be around tomorrow. And we'll see what happens. Good night. Goodbye. Sweet dreams. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.